So in my last video I made this coronavirus e-paper display that uses the ESP32 to check the CDC's website once an hour. And uh, in that video I mentioned that the CDC's website could change and then how it scrapes that data uh, would have to change as well. And I was kind of expecting this to happen like weeks, maybe months from now. Uh, but just last night I looked over at it and the display said could not update. So something broke. And in this video, I'm going to show you what broke and how I fixed it. So you might remember that when we were inspecting the website, we came across this little JSON URL. And then when you threw that in uh, to a browser, you would get this whole JSON packet here. And then when we parsed it out, uh, we saw one of these elements was uh, called data. And then that had all of the states and the total number of cases and everything. Well, that's what changed, because now when we look at it, we no longer see data, but we do see data URL. So when we take this, and you see that it's a .csv there, and CSV is comma separated value, so that'll just be a big table. Not quite as easy to work with as the JSON packet, uh, but we can still figure it out. So let me go and grab this now, and then we'll paste that into the browser. And that will just download it here and open it up as a table. So you see we've got the columns. We've got one, two, three, four, five columns, and then all of the rows for each state. So again, we're only interested in Ohio, so I'm going to have to go and sweep through this in the ESP32 code to find Ohio and then pull out the total cases reported here. So it shouldn't be too bad, but... It's uh, not going to be quite as easy because we no longer have that nice Arduino JSON library to do our all of the parsing for us. So let me show you how I did this. Alright, so I'm not going to cover anything that was already covered in that last video. I'm just going to show you how I was able to deal with that CSV file. So right when it wakes up after the one hour timer has elapsed, right here we're going to do our connection. I added in a few debugging things like when it wakes up, now just clear the display out just in case anything should happen in here and it fails out and does not show us that could not update text. We want it to at least be blanked out. So going through here, you'll see that you know we check for the Wi-Fi, then we connect to the cdc.gov host on 443. We're connected. Now we're going to use this URL, the .csv URL that I just found and that's going to stream in all of that CSV text. So we bring all of that in and then wait for something to come back and as soon as something does come back we're going to then go and start reading everything in. So here's kind of a cool way of doing this actually. I found this in this example here. So this uh, JSON HTTP client. I know we're not using Arduino JSON but I kinda like the way they uh, did this request. So here you see what they're doing is is checking for first for the OK status back from the host and then skipping through all of the headers here. So you're looking for like the double carriage return new line feeds there. And then finally you have all of your data, which is kind of cool. So I actually reused this, you know, because what we're going to see here in this response, if I just looked at what comes back, you're going to see the HTTP, OK, some other stuff, and then you'll see these two blank lines at the end of all of that, and then finally the data comes in as the raw CSV data. So that's what, here, what we can do is actually first check to see if it's OK, and if it's not, I'll print that cannot update. And then also, right here, we're looking for the end of headers, and then I didn't even know you could do this, but a client.find of the end of header, so it'll just go until that, and then uh, if we got that, of course, move on. If not, we can show that could not update. Then we need to parse everything out. So the way this is going to be presented to us is just one big massive uh, stream. Like you're going to get the name, comma, range, comma, all the way on through. So each row then is then uh, has a, uh, a carriage return new line feed at the end of it. And then this just repeats. So then it would be like Alabama, Alaska, blah, 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 all the way down. So each one of the columns here is separated by a, col uh, a comma, and then at the end of it here, this would have that carriage return new line feed. So all we have to do is just basically, you know, sniff through this, looking for the commas and the carriage return new line feed there. And at first I was thinking about, like, 
you know, streaming all of this into a massive multi-dimensional array and then use that to figure out where everything's at. But it's actually almost easier just to find it kind of as we're working through it. So that's the way I decided to do it. And each time I find something, I'm going to store it in this client buffer. And then we're going to keep track of the columns because it should go 0 to 4, 0 to 4, 0 to 4, and so on. So we need to keep track of it because when we're on column 0, we're going to be looking for a comma. When we're on column 4, we're going to be looking for a carriage return new line feed. And then once we find the state, we're going to set a Boolean. And then once we find the cases reported for that state, we'll also set a Boolean. And you'll see how that works. And then we're going to actually s store the cases reported here in this character array, cases reported. So all of the magic happens in this while loop. So this is where I previously was doing the JSON concatenation, you know, to build out that JSON string that we could then use to parse out the data. Same kind of idea here. So we go into this and for a second we're waiting to see if the client becomes available and then we pull out, you know, the data so that if this ever times out, we must be done. Everything must be read in and we're, we're done with what we're doing here. So uh, as it becomes available, we then go in and figure out where we're at in the CSV file. So it's going through Every time we, we read in new data, we're going to in increment the column count index. And like I said, we're going to be going 0 to 4, 0 to 4, 0 to 4, just like that. And uh, if it's less than 4, then we must expect a comma after. So that's why we're actually doing a client.readbytes until we see that, that comma, store it in the client buffer, obviously the size of the client buffer, and it's a good idea to subtract one from that because we need to add the null end character to that string. Uh, I made a whole video about how strings work. You can go to my channel and look for that. And I actually have this same kind of thing in there. And now the total size for that string that we read in will be stored here, size t of buffer size. And then that allows us to actually set the last character on that string to null. And then we can print that out. So then we're just going through this whole thing and we know that the name should be in the first column. So if column index here is zero and we see Ohio there for the client buffer, then we know we found our state. So now we'll just set that to true and then we're gonna work our way through. So then the cases reported should be in column two right here so after that. So then when we see column count index two and of course we have a found state, then we can do a string copy over from the client buffer to cases reported, set the found cases reported to true. So that's only if we're expecting a comma when the column count index is less than four. If it's not, that means we're on the last um, column here. URL is what it would be in that table. So now we're going to expect, you know, we're going to look for the carriage return new line feed. And you can see that here. So instead of looking for the comma, we're looking for the carriage return. Same kind of thing we go through, but we also know that there's a second new line character after the carriage return. So I just character junk and read that out right there. And then this is where we do the column count set back to zero and also set the found state back to false. And so just in case we see anything in there, it's just a little error checking to put in there. Okay, and that just works its way through that entire CSV file. And then we uh, do a client.stop, which is important to do because we're going to wake up once an hour to do this. So we want to make sure we disconnect. And then the here right, is where we have the update for the display. So same thing as before. Uh, this is kind of nice, though, because we have that Boolean. So if it never found the state, it won't go through this and update the display. It'll show that something went wrong, the update not found. So... Uh, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. So just a little bit of uh, CSV parsing versus JSON parsing. And I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.